In a previous video, I covered the Japanese 25mm anti-aircraft gun. That is an infamously bad weapon system, although one that isn't often explained. It's just a general assumption that anyone who knows Japanese naval history knows the 25mm is terrible. As I went over in that video, it was less a case of the weapon being inherently bad, although it had flaws, and more a failure of doctrine and the supporting system. I also brought up the Japanese 10cm gun, generally regarded as their best dual-purpose weapon. This is actually an interesting case, because it's basically the polar opposite of the Type 96. It's an excellent weapon, it's said to be good, but rarely talked about in any great detail. Online discussions, in particular, will often rave about this gun, and say the Japanese should have built more of them. While true, to be fair, that's not going to help the layman who stumbles across it. I haven't really had the chance to cover it before myself, because I haven't covered any of the ships that used it. But, it was requested in the 25mm video, so I'll briefly look at the 10cm gun in this one. Before I move on, however, I need to preface things with this. There is actually a shockingly small amount written on this weapon system. At least in English. A lot of online sources will just copy NAVWEPS, admittedly a good source, verbatim. The Naval Technical Mission to Japan, at least, provides some good detail if you can find it online. As for reference books, even some of the commonly recommended books on the Japanese Navy barely go into detail. That's not a flaw in those books, of course, they just focus on other topics. I'll do my best to elaborate on the material that's available, but this will mostly be focused on what you can actually find. Right, with that out of the way, some background. The origins of the Type 98 10cm gun can be traced back to the mid-1930s. Even at that point, the Japanese were becoming aware that their existing dual-purpose guns had issues. On the destroyer guns, that was a problem with the mount. The mounts were slow to traverse and aim, and the ammunition had to be rammed in by hand. That required loading at a specific elevation, and slowed rate of fire considerably. The similar, but not identical, secondary guns on larger ships had a different issue. That weapon had a good rate of fire, and could be aimed relatively quickly, but it had a low muzzle velocity. On an anti-aircraft gun, that means a lower maximum altitude for firing at aircraft. This issue is the more pertinent one in relation to the Type 98. And that's because the entire purpose of the 10cm gun was to make a very high velocity, if relatively low caliber, anti-aircraft weapon. Although there was also a goal to make this rapid firing in response to the issue with existing destroyer guns. In any case, the concept design dates all the way back to 1933. That was a longer barrel 10cm 70 caliber gun, with presumably an even higher velocity as a result. I say presumably because this was reduced to the production design before even reaching prototype stage. Specifically, this was changed to a 10cm 65 caliber gun. According to NAVWEPS, the formal design process began in December 1935 and was finished by April of 1937, with firing trials beginning in 1938. Those trials progressed fairly quickly, I imagine, as the gun was formally adopted in 1938 as well. This is where the Type 98 name originated. It's based on the Japanese Imperial Calendar, which has 1938 as the year 2598. This is also why the 25mm is the Type 96, it was adopted in 1936, or 2596. Quirky dating schemes aside, the first ship to use this new weapon was the Akizuki-class destroyer. These entered service beginning in 1942, meaning that the Type 98 took a fair bit of time to properly seize service. NAVWEPS, for what it's worth, cites the guns beginning proper production in 1940. The only other ships to be completed with these weapons were a single light cruiser, Oyoto, and the aircraft carrier Taiho. 
of these ships, the Akizuki class, got the most use of their shiny new toys. And it was service aboard these ships and some land mountings that shaped the opinion of these weapons. As said at the start, that opinion is generally, these were great, why didn't Japan build more of them? However, I can hear the question being asked, why were these so good? Well, part of this is the fact they were far superior to other Japanese weapons of the type. That colors perception to some extent. However, the other part is that these were genuinely effective weapons. First and foremost, that high velocity, 1000 meters per second, equated to a very long range. The maximum stated range from the technical mission to Japan was 21,350 yards on the surface and 14,220 yards in the anti-aircraft roll. That's roughly 19,522 meters on the surface and 13,000 meters in the anti-aircraft roll. NAVWEPS give slightly different numbers, 19,500 and 14,700 meters respectively, with the effective ranges given as 14,000 meters on the surface and 11,000 meters against aircraft. That's not a bad range by any means. For sake of comparison, the 12.7 centimeter gun on cruisers and other large ships managed 9,400 meters in the anti-aircraft roll. The other main advantage to the Type 98 was its rate of fire. The technical mission to Japan lists this as 19 to 21 rounds per minute. Quite impressive to be sure, but this might not be entirely accurate. NAVWEP states that crewmen on Akizuki-class destroyers reported a more typical 15 rounds per minute. Still nothing to sneeze at in comparison to 5 to 10 rounds per minute on older destroyers. And the same crewmen say they could reach 19 rounds per minute. It was just very difficult. That increased rate of fire largely came from the loading angle. The Type 98 could be loaded at any angle, in theory. And that meant the rate of fire was limited only by mechanical limitations and how fast the crew could load shells. Older destroyers were limited to loading at angles of 5 to 10 degrees. This inherently slowed the process because the guns had to be reset every time they were reloaded, at least when engaging aircraft. As for the mountings themselves, I'll continue to use Akizuki as a baseline. On these ships, the guns could elevate as high as 90 degrees. The older Japanese destroyers were limited to 75 degrees at most. A higher elevation, plus the high velocity, is responsible for the longer range. The mounts themselves were also substantially faster. On Akizuki, the training rate was 11 to 16 degrees per second. On the 12.7 centimeter mounts for older ships, it was 4 to 6 degrees per second. For context, train, or training in this case, means how fast they rotate. While not a simulator by any stretch of the imagination, if you've played World of Warships, you can see this in game. Just exaggerated a fair bit. That more or less covers the improvements, at least in the anti-aircraft role, of the Type 98. If you would like to get into the weeds on the technical details, I will be linking both the NAVWEPS page and the technical mission. As you can see, using the Akizuki as a baseline, these are much better weapons than the 12.7 centimeter guns, at least when used against aircraft. Surface targets are a different story. Apparently the Japanese never developed an armor-piercing round for these guns, at least according to NAVWEPS. Regardless, the Type 98 was faster firing, had a higher elevation, and a longer range. The mounts were far faster to traverse and align on target. For an anti-aircraft gun, all of these are very good things to have. It's why this weapon is often cited as Japan's best in this specific role. And, in fairness, it really was. While hyper-specialized for the anti-aircraft role, it performed that role as well as it could. All of that being said, though, it wasn't perfect. In common with high-velocity weapons in other navies, looking at Italy in particular, these guns had a short service life. 
the high-velocity shells, coupled with the fast rate of fire, wore down the barrel linings. The average barrel life for a Type 98 gun was between 350 to 400 rounds, or, using Akizuki as an example, only slightly more than the ship carried. The destroyer carried 300 rounds per gun, for reference. This isn't an inherently bad thing, provided you can reline or replace the barrels in short order. This being 1940s Japan, well, NavWeb says they only completed 169 guns total between 1940 and 1944. The Japanese simply couldn't build these fast enough, which is why you see ships like the Unryu class retain the older 12.7 cm guns. Otherwise, these were fine weapons, hampered mostly by production bottlenecks. I've also, as mentioned in the 25mm video, read that Japanese fire control was not as good as American fire control, at least against aircraft. That's a topic I want to do more reading on, though, and I'll leave it as this was also an issue for now. Exact details on that issue can come at a later date. In the end, as we round off this video, it can be said that the Type 98 was one of the best anti-aircraft guns of the war. I would hesitate to call it one of the best destroyer guns, as even the Japanese used it mostly against aircraft. But, in that role, it was the best the Japanese had. And, within the limitations of Japanese industry and technology, it was quite good at the job. Thank you for watching. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe if you enjoy the content. And I'll see you in the next one.